there is no risk. So the uh, last but not the least for this part, second part we will be all will be speaking because we have a lot of uh, dignitaries who will be speaking. Now, our chapters we are encouraging them to run, whether it is in a school board or community board. Yeah, Jim has appointed first one, first Bangladeshi. Jim is going to appoint more in the future. And he promised me he's going to talk to me first. Is not a good thing. So line up. Do your work. Do your work in next one year, two year. And Jim will have one or two openings. We'll get them. And we need them. Because we are part of this mosaic in this country. So with that note, one of our chapter president. We have a chapter. Queens is very lucky. We have three chapters in Queens. Queens general chapter. Jackson has chapter with the Nepalese, Bhutanese, and the thing. Somnath is not here. Somnath is the president. And then we have a Richmond Hills chapter. Yeah. Richmond Hill chapter, Albert Baldio, just became the district leader. So he can speak whole day, but I have told him to speak for two minutes so that we can eat. Here we go. <laughs> Thank you very much, ma'am. I believe that my has to refer to me because of all the political activists in this room, I'm possibly the oldest one since 2000. So in that respect, Maf has to have that respect to me. Thank you very much, Maf. But I want to tell you that whenever folks tell us that they stand on our shoulders, it is so. In 2000, when South Asians were never even heard of getting involved in politics, that is when we stood up. And Jim Gennaro will remember this and Stavisky and, and John Lou. We were among the first South Asians that broke the barrier. Mursha Alam ran against Frank Padovan, almost defeated him by 500 votes. And I ran against Surf Maltese, who wanted to legalize a, a bill to make le uh, racial profiling legal, meaning that 99% of you in this room would have been stopped and frisked legally. You would have been judged by the color of your skin. And we stood up and we fought. So we've had a legacy, Jim, going back since then. And we've continued to be the backbone of the Democratic Party. And hence, we will continue to fight, and I want you to follow in those footsteps. So when Ms. Rajkumar tells you that nobody thought she could have won, that is not exactly so, because we knew we had laid the foundations and very firm foundations in Richmondale and Ozone Park and Woodhaven, and in Bangladesh, we will continue to do that because we want to see more and more of us elected to federal office, state, city, and state government following the footsteps of the wonderful John Lou, who crossed that barrier. And my appeal tonight is to the, yes, please, give a round of applause for that, because this concerns you, and this is about your entire future in government. And um, when we talk about empowering the Democratic Party, we have always been loyal, and I call upon the elders of the party, many of whom are in this room today, like Mr. Gennaro and Mr. Senator Lou and uh, uh, Councilman Gennaro and Stavisky, and my wonderful friend, she's gone now. Um, Jessica Ramos, who has always supported us. She actually worked on my campaign. She was making phone calls in 2002, and probably 500 more phone calls would have won. We want to ensure that we're here to stand and stand for him and make sure that we too can have a stake of the pie. We too can live the American dream. You're entitled so your children can, have, your children can have a better future. You can be counted and you can also make sure that our policies and our aims and our dreams are recognized and realized in this great country. Now, I make an appeal to these elders because this is a uh, map of Richmond Hill and it's cut in four. You see that, James? It's cut in four. You have one part, David Weprin, Rajkumar, Pfeffer, and Anderson. And this is wrong. So I call upon the leadership of the Democratic Party to include us, include us and give us our fair due. Make sure that we are also treated fairly and in accordance with the policy and also